So here we are in the RStudio Integrated Development Environment, or IDE for short. And what you'll notice here is that there are four window panes that we're gonna be using in RStudio. So we have the script area here in the upper left. We have the console down in the bottom left. And in the top right, we have what's called our global environment. And in the bottom right, we have various tabs. And so you'll notice in the top left, this is where we're going to be writing our scripts. And the scripts are going to be executed into the console. So as an example, if I decide to add two plus two, and I click enter, nothing will happen. Now, if I highlight this, and I don't necessarily have to highlight it, but I'll highlight it here, and then I click run, we'll notice what happens down in the bottom left-hand side in the console. We'll notice that the script was written two plus two with an executable result, and the answer is four. So you'll notice that any scripts that you write in the script area will not necessarily be executed until you click run and it enters into the console. Now you can also type directly into the console. So I can type in the bottom left hand side two plus two and I can hit enter and we'll get the answer of four. However, I don't necessarily recommend that you do that because as you start developing more and more scripts and you start working more thoroughly in R, it becomes a little bit messy. So you wanna keep all of the work that you're doing and all of the script and programming work that you're gonna be doing up in the script area and you always wanna have the result come out into the console. Now the global environment over here on the right hand side is where it's gonna give us all of our information in terms of all of the objects or variables that we've stored in our scripting work. So what do I mean by this? Let's say for an example, I have a variable x and I wanna to assign to the variable x a vector of integers ranging from one to 10. So if I just click enter here, nothing is going to happen. However, I can highlight this area of code, I can click run and then in the console, it's gonna give us the executed command, x gets one through 10. So what that's saying is that the variable x has been assigned a vector of integers ranging from one to 10. And what you notice here is that on the right hand side in the global environment, this is going to keep track of all the variables and objects that we've defined. So you notice here that we have the value x, it's been assigned as an integer, and it's a vector ranging from one to 10. As another example, let's define another variable and we'll call it y. So we can assign y gets two plus two. So I'll just run this code and you notice what happens in the bottom console is that it shows us the executable code y gets two plus two. And we'll notice up in the top right hand side in the global environment, we have a new value that's been assigned. The variable is called y and it gives us the answer of four. And so you notice here that there's a very logical sequence of what's happening. In the top left-hand side, we have all of the scripts that we're running. In the bottom left-hand side, in the console area, is the result of running all of those scripts. And then in the top right-hand side is the global environment, which is going to keep track of all the different variables and objects that we have defined in our work. Now in the bottom right hand side we have various tabs. So we have all of the files that we can find on our computer. We have plots we have the different packages, we have a help area, and then we have a viewer area. So let's come to the packages for one second. Base R comes with a variety of packages, and as we work forward and progress using R, we're gonna be using different packages that have been developed by the R community to work on various problems and to execute various scripts that we may need to answer any type of research questions we might be having. And you notice here that we have the check marks. In order to use a package, it has to be checked. So what I could do is just check class, for example, so functions for any type of classification work we might be doing. I can click that and then you notice that in the console we have a result and it says the library class and it's pulled it from the library and now it's loaded into R. So we can use now any of the functions that are in that package. Um, plots as an example. So if we wanted to make any plots within our scripts, the results of all of those plots will come here. So first let's define another variable that we might be able to plot. So I'm gonna define another variable and I'm gonna call it z. So z gets another integer of, let's say 11 through 20. Okay, I'm gonna run z. So what's gonna happen? You know, it's gonna be executed into the console and then z is now going to show up in our global environment as it did before. Now we have z that showed up in our global environment. So let's say we wanna plot x and z. So we could plot x and z. I'll run the code. 
It's executed in the console. And then you notice that a plot shows up right behind me. So let me move myself over for a second. And we notice here that we have Z is plotted against X. And now what we can do with this plot is that we can export the plot. We could save it as an image. We could save it as a PDF, or we could copy it to a clipboard if we want. And we can maybe copy and paste it into a Word document if we're working with a Word document. So we have a lot of useful features in the IDE environment, and it keeps it really easy to organize and keep track of all the work that we're doing within our project. Okay, I'm going to bring myself back over now. Another thing I wanted to introduce to you is how do we customize our studio? So if we go under tools and we go to global options, we'll see that the options pops up and we have various tabs that we can use to customize our R Studio environment. This works both on Mac and Windows. And if you are using a Mac, you can also go up to R Studio, click on preferences, and it'll give you the same thing. So generally, I would advise just to keep the default options because the default options work nicely, especially if you're just beginning to use R. So here we have our general tab. So here you can set a default working directory. We'll talk about that in some later videos, but in terms of setting up where your files are being kept for your R projects, I generally like to keep this with the default settings. So the next tab is code, and here we can make some personal changes in terms of how the code looks in using R. Once again, I don't necessarily make any changes. I just keep it as the default. Here is the appearance. So here with the appearance, we can actually make things look a little bit different. So if we look on the editor theme as an example, we can change it to different colors, however you see fit. So we have different colors here. We can also change the font size. So we can make the font larger or smaller. Once again, I generally like to keep this uh, pretty much the same as the default. Here we have pane layout. So if we look back here, we have our syntax area in the top left. We have the console in the bottom left global environment in the top right, and then we have our plots in the bottom right. Now we can change these and customize them however we want. So here we could just click on this, we could change the console and put it up in the top left if we want, and we can play with the location of the four different panes. In this particular case, I wouldn't necessarily change anything. So here we have packages. So you might remember in a previous video when we downloaded R, we used a mirror and we selected where we wanted to download it from based upon our location. And so here we can change that. So I'm just gonna click on change for one second. I'm gonna come down to the USA. And once again, I'm living in the Southern part of the United States. So I'm going to click on the Tennessee. I'll click okay. And then that way we don't necessarily have to change it. And anytime we're downloading something from the CRAN, it'll automatically pull from that location. So here's a tab for our markdown. So if you want to develop any type of producible reports, we can do that with the markdown tab. Here is Sweeve. If we're writing a paper using LaTeX, it gives us the option of taking some of our code and making it formatted properly for the LaTeX format. Here is Spelling, and we have some Git, which we won't necessarily talk about, some backend coding availability on our computer. We have a publishing area, so different publishing accounts we can connect, and then another tab for using the terminal on our computer once again. So this should give you some, some basic options of making some changes based upon any preferences that you might find fit. If you are just starting with our studio, I wouldn't necessarily change anything. For the most part, the default settings are absolutely fine for what you're going to be using.